Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and welcome in this tutorial where I will show you how to go from something like that to something like this. Yeah, pretty much how to create endless runner for your mobile phone, whether it is Android or iPhone, doesn't matter, completely from scratch and right here without anything. I will show you where to get your resources, where to get assets, so if you want you can end with exact same result as I have. Well, let's get to it. We will start on Mixamo because first of all you need to get some character with animations and you don't want to make it yourself. So for that we will use Mixamo which is website from Adobe where you can choose some characters from here and animate them. You can of course also upload your own character to download from elsewhere or create yourself if you are brave enough. But here I'm not going to waste time with that and let's, let's put here this motion capture guy. Use this character. Alright, so now when we have character, let's go to animations and we'll have to choose some. So for our endless runner we need, I believe, three animations, but first of all we need the run. So, and you know what, let's let's act professionally and adhere this Naruto run. Because there is nothing better than Naruto run. And let's put it in, in place, make sure that you enable this in place, it will be much easier to set up. So once you have it, click on download. Everything leave as it is, which means FBX with skin and 30 frames per second. Download it. All right, and we also will need to have him just standing there as idle character before he will start running. So let's find some idle. And let's say that he will be happily idle, because it's better to be happy idle than just idle. You know what I mean. So let's take it and download it as well and this time around you don't need to have a skin with it it will just download skeleton with animations and you can set it to use mesh that we have downloaded before so let's download it and we also will need some kind of jump let's see for example jumping just jumping no that's not gonna work we need something where he will just stay in place let's actually go with jump with this beautiful lady because right here we can set it to in place Right now it looks kinda weird, but trust me, it will look pretty good. Let's download it, again without skin. You can also see that it's pretty small file if you are downloading it without skin. Alright, that should be about all character assets we need now, so let's go to library. In your Epic Game Launcher, we will need to create new project for it. Let's launch your version of Unreal Engine, it probably doesn't matter what version we are using. I am on 4.25.4 and we are going to create new game. That game will be a third person character right here. Click next, leave it to blueprints and we are going to develop for mobile and tablet and we don't want any starter content and just to be sure maximum quality switch to scalable 3D or 2D and probably don't use ray tracing unless you have some phone from NASA in that case not sure what we are watching here anyway let's also rename our project for example something like press the like button and subscribe to channel all right that's probably not a good game but you should do it nevertheless let's delete this one and call it endless runner mobile and you can see that we have some problem, name of project cannot contain spaces, so let's put here underscores. But you probably don't need to worry about that because we are currently pressing the like button. Let's create the project. Now when you have new project, let's import here our character. So let's right click and create here a new folder. That folder will be called character and because we will have only one character, let's just leave it like that. And I personally prefer to click on this icon because it's easier to orient in this tree structure. So let's click on character and then get your downloaded files. And first of all, you need to import your FBX file with mesh. If you are goldfish and don't remember which was with mesh, you can simply look at size of it. The, the one with mesh will be much bigger, which means it's this run. So let's put it here, import, and make sure that skeletal mesh and import mesh is enabled because we need to create new skeleton and also make sure that you enable import animations because we also want our run animation. Click on import all. Alright, you can see that it shows us some errors, but you can probably ignore that. If you want a quick fix for that, you need to use T zeros when you are importing it, but it probably doesn't matter. You can check it if you click on this animation and see that it works pretty well. The problem was that skeleton from Mixamo is a bit different than skeleton that Unreal Engine like to use. There is also a way to fix it. 
you can import it all in Blender and then export it for Unreal Engine. I have actually a tutorial for that, so link in the description and this eye somewhere. So if you want to see that, you can. But let's continue with this tutorial. Right now it's compiling shaders because this character has already applied all these materials. So let it compile and import the rest of the animations. Now you can select all of them and put it here. By all of them I mean these two of course. And make sure that your skeleton, the skeleton is set to run skeleton and animation exported time blah 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 that's all fine let's import all and now if you look at it you can see that our animations are good and well you can put it in the game if you click on this arrow next to play button you can select simulate and he should be dancing and he even has a textures congratulations guys you got this wonderful actor in our game to make it a little bit organized let's create a new folder that will be called materials and take all the materials and textures and put them in it. Move it here. So now the next thing will be to actually use this character. Because first of all I will show you how to program all the logic for your game and then switch character and do visual stuff to make it actually look nice. So let's click uh, again on this arrow and put it on selected viewport. That will start your game and you can see that you can control your character a third person going from anywhere you want. But that's not exactly how you play Endless Render so we will need to change it quite a lot. Let's escape from it. Click on your third person character and right here on the right side edit third person character. From now on I will go fairly fast so if you don't understand something and you are a complete beginner or something like that, don't hesitate to ask in comments or join the discord. It's much more likely that I or someone on discord will see your question and will try to help you there. So link in the description. And now let's actually get to it. You will need to find logic for moving. And moving input seems about right. That's exactly what we want, but right now it works only if you press button before going forward, which means W on your keyboard. So let's actually delete all that. We don't want to go right, we don't want to go left, nothing like that. So we will just take this, delete input axis move forward and find here event tick. So right click and put here event tick. Right, it created new one, that means it wasn't used before in this project. And let's start by just connecting it here. Let's see what it does. Compile. Event basically do all the logic after it every single frame of the game. That's why it is quite expensive, so don't use it for too much stuff. Let's click on play. And he's running and I can stop it. Wonderful, that's what I wanted. I can still jump, but I can't go left and right, but it will go forever forward. Let's say that it works way too fast for now. So for that we will create here new variable and for this scale value, right now it's set to 1 and we will have to change it. So right click on it and promote it to variable. Let's call it speed. And by default it's set to, zero, uh, so it's set to 1, let's set it to 0 0.5 by default, which will be probably pretty slow, but you will see, yeah, you can see that it's very slow. You can also see that I can still move my camera, so let's do something about that. If you don't want to click always on that character and right click, you can find it in content browser, in third person BP, blueprints, and here it is, third person character, it's the name of it. Let's set speed to 0.8. And if you also wonder why I've turned it into variable, that's simply because I want to be able to speed it up later. So let's say that after 5 minutes of playing you, want, you would want to have speed to be much faster than on the start of the game. And now let's do something with that turning of camera. Here we have mouse input, that's something we don't want. We don't want to be able to turn camera. So let's delete it, compile, and now, can, now I can't even use my camera. I can still jump, but that's about it. The problem now is that every time you run forward, you run right into this wall. So the logical answer for that would be to simply delete that wall. But now you would just fall down into abyss. So let's create some corridor or floor that will let you run. Let's do it in third person BP and blueprints. We will just save here all our blueprints. So let's right click, blueprints, and set it just to actor. We will call it corridor. All right, double click on it. And first of all, let's put here cube. Just a regular cube. And because it should be floor, let's scale it down on Z axis. Make sure that this lock is unlocked and put it down. Let's go with 0 0.1 and always put it in the game. So we have some idea how big it actually is. And now you can see that it's pretty small. So let's say that we want it to have 10 times 10. That will be actually 
pretty big to be honest. Let's try 6 by 10. And that's, uh, that's starting to look about right. I would probably make it even longer. I would go with 8 times 16. Yep, that looks about right. If you put it somewhere here, you can let it run. And you can see that it's running forward, forward, but once it ends, it of course he of course dies. Which is something we will have to fix. First of all, we will have to take this cube and move it so it starts somewhere around here. Pretty much on a place where you have, could have seen this white ball that indicates start of this uh, blueprint. Now we will add here component. That component will be collision, box collision. Scale it up. And because we are just testing it all now, let's make sure that we see it in the game. Let's scroll down and set the rendering to hidden on game, disable it. So now you will be able to see it in the game. And it's weirdly, it's not on the center, why is that? Hmm. Alright, let's make sure that it covers all of it. Alright, so now next thing will be to add here arrow because we need some component that will indicate us its position. You can see that position 000 is approximately here on the start, but we need to put this arrow on the end of our corridor. So I believe that we set it to 16, so it should be 600. Let's try it. If I. Alright, now that. Um, the problem is that I'm scaling. You should set location x to. 600 let's see oh, it looks about right yeah and now let's pretend to be organized and call that arrow underscore bound location and and the cube let's call it floor box collision let's, let's leave it as box collision we don't need to overdo it so much but we will actually work with that box collision now let's scroll down and click on on component begin overlap create cast to third person character. Casting is basically asking the other character if he can do something for you. We want to connect it to other actor. So once player will overlap with this collision, something will happen. And that something should be creating new blueprints. So from this corridor, we will create new corridor right on this position. And because we are starting this on position 000, it should spawn it on the end of it. Let's take it from this cast and we will spawn actor from class that actor will be of course our corridor and as spawn transform let's use this arrow that's why we have it here with such a long useless name from that we will get world transform and connect it here so now let's actually test it we will move it move it a little bit closer so it's easier to go for it and see what it does all right Oh, that looks pretty cool, look at that. Every time our player will run through that collision, it will spawn next corridor, next piece of corridor, so he will never run out of it. If you want to look at debug camera, you will probably need to go into project setting and set, uh, set up shortcut for that, because I'm not sure what this is by default. I have it as asterisk, and you can see that it's all, it's spawning next and one and next one and next one. Now let's create touch control so you can actually control it with your finger once you put it in your phone. Now let's, again, let's go into third person character and somewhere here should be, you know what, let's delete gamepad input and VR setting. We won't need any of that. We will need this touch input. Sadly enough, all this is pretty much useless for us, so let's delete it. And what we will have to do is, first of all, create here a new variable. So let's go down here on the left and create here a new variable. And that variable should be touch underscore start. And make sure that you change variable type to vector 2D right here. And now let's duplicate it and simply rename it to touch and make sure that you compile so you can work with these variables and let's look at this input touch. What it does, it always notices that you touched your screen and where it is. But now we also need to make sure that engine knows where if you are swiped left, right or up, down, etc. So after you press it, we will need to set our touch start and we also need 
to save where it was. So let's take this location and break vector because we are using only X and Y axis. It will be pretty weird if you use Z axis on your phone. Right click on this touch screen and split structure pin. Then connect X and Y. And actually before we are pressing it, we will make sure that we have reference for knowing that it is happening. So we will create new variable. That variable should should be is pressing. Switch it to boolean. Take is pressing from here and make sure that you click on this execution pin. And we will set it to true. And now we will need to create new custom event. So again, right click and put here cast add custom event. That custom event should be called check swiping. And now we want to make sure that it's checking swiping pretty much every frame. So click on this event tick, move it back a little bit and put here sequence. So we can add here another branch. From there, let's put here actual branch. And as that condition, we will use is pressing. If it's true, we will call that custom event. So check swiping. So every tick of the game, it will ask if it should check swiping, but it will check them only after you put your finger on screen or just interact with, in, with it in any way. All right, let's move check swiping somewhere here. So first of all, after check swiping, we will need to add here another branch because we need to check how much you have actually moved your finger. But before we will check it, we need to also set our variables for touch end. Take touch end and set it here. Connect it to released. And again, you can use same location. Okay, of course you need to split structure pin and you can use same X and Y location. It actually is not same location. That location has changed because this action is on released where that location is different, hopefully, than on press. So these are different coordinates, even though they are going from same node, simply because they were shot at different time. Let's go back to this branch and we will take our touch start, get touch start, get touch end and subtract them from each other. We'll go vector 2D minus vector 2D. From it we will have to take vector length to see what is an actual value in float, vector 2D length, and we'll see if it's bigger than something. I would do about 300. That's basically how big difference it must be before your touch start to touch end to notice it is swipe. You can play with this value to find something just right for you. So after it makes sure that it actually is swipe, we will fire from here do once. And because if, if it stayed like that, it would really do it only once. Or you could swipe only once in your whole game. Let's connect this reset always here. So after every release, it will reset it and you can keep swiping. Now we will actually set touch end again. And you don't need to take it from here. You can just copy it here. Let's uh, control C, control V, connect it. Let's add here get player controller. And from it, let's take input touch state. Why do I have a caps lock? Um, make sure that it's on touch one because this one works with touch one as well. You can check it here. You can see current value is set to touch one. And now let's take that X value and Y value. So from now we will need to run bunch of uh, branches to figure out which directions that swipe went. So let's start with it. Branch. And let's take here touch start, get touch start and touch end, which has possibly a different value that it had before because we have set it here again. And again set touch start minus vector touch end, break vector 2D, set bot to absolute value, absolute float. And that and as condition, we need to set it to float bigger than float. So let's set it here and connect absolute for X here and absolute for Y here. From that, let's run another branch. Take X value, make sure that it's bigger than zero. Connect it here again. And if X value here is bigger than zero, then it should be left. So let's let's actually put here just a comment, click C and put here left. You can print here string or something, but this is this will do for now. And if it's false, it should be a right. These are just comments for us, so we know which one we should be used for what. And then we will continue with this branch. If it's false, 
let's duplicate this one and connect it with y and put here another branch again right here and here if y is bigger than zero it should be up and if it's false it should be down all right that should be it look at that let's actually comment it all so we know what's happening here let's select notes that you want to comment and click c this one is check if is touching check if it is touching right now let's take all these move them down comment it all and call it determine swipe and this one should be just check if it should be swiping you can comment it however you want just make sure that you actually know what that code was about because we all know that time where we programmed something and then came later to it probably even that day and have no idea what happened there so comment comment everything guys it's much better than not commenting so now when we have touch control working we can actually set up here some moving let's find some empty space for example here and create here new custom events Cust add custom event and let's call it move left and what we will do here is take our capsule component and also just to make sure that we know what is actually happening click on that capsule component and disable this hidden in game so right now if you run the game you will be able to see that component it can come pretty handy take that capsule component and add local offset oh let's do actually add world offset and if you are not sure which location it should be you can just find your character somewhere here and you have here your transform arrows that you can see and you need you see that i am moving my green which means y axis and think about that so let's say plus 300 let's say about plus 300 that should be fine so y on the left should be probably minus 300 you can switch that later i'm probably wrong not gonna lie and create here a new custom event that should be move right and just again duplicate it you can connect same capsule component and set it to plus 300 and now we will call these custom events from here so let's go here in that branch touch control and after the left we will call move left and after right obviously move right and we also have function for jumping so after up we will call jump no not a stop jumping exact opposite of it actually start jumping jump nice but now it of course wouldn't work if you played it you can't do anything because your mouse doesn't work so we'll need to go to edit project setting and in search details put here mouse and use mouse for touch that will let you use your mouse as if it was a finger on your touch screen all right so now you have here your mouse and you have also these touchpads we will get rid of them later but now you can see that if i move it and i have to move it a lot to make it happen so we will need to change the threshold let's go into third person character it was right here okay right here now let's put here actually another command how much swipe and let's change it to 100 maybe even more all up to you play and now you can see that if i okay <laughs> that wasn't my best idea if I, you can see that if i move it just a bit it works just fine and it's jumping in between that all right let's set up switching between lines we already have this movement but you can see that it would be switching a bit too much so let's fix that so first of all we need to adjust our game map let's delete everything at least here and we will need to make sure that our character is set to location on y-axis as zero and let's delete this weird thing and make sure that corridor is as well set to zero so when you start your character will be running right in the middle on zero coordinates if you switch it to left he will be on minus 300 and if you switch it to right he will be in plus 100 which is exactly what we will use if you want to get rid of these shadows you need to rebake lighting so click on build build lighting 
and build the right lighting only setting is set to preview and while the lighting is building we can get rid of the joystick we had on screen so let's click on edit project setting and let's try right here touch yeah we are here we go we got mobile always touch in always show touch interface is disabled but we have default set to this thing so we will simply clear it and that should help us have nothing there okay i have hit lighting build completed which you cannot see because of my face you are welcome by the way click on apply now and it's all gone but now if you click play you can see that we don't have here any joystick and touch control you can you can use just your mouse so now let's limit our movement to the left and right click on third person character and we're here we have our move left and move right right here move it forward a bit and set up here branch we will start in move left and we, sh we simply will need to take our capsule component and get its location so get world location right let's take from our condition float equal to float here we go equal float and from our get world location we will split structure pin and take here only y value so how to see which one should be which is pretty simple if you look at if you click on our character and move it to left you can see that on left side it's minus 300 and on the right side it's plus 300 so let's make sure that it's again on zero and now when you want to move left it will first of all check if it is equal to minus 300 if it is equal to it you won't do anything but if it's not that means it's on zero or plus 300 you will move to you will execute it and move your actor to minus 300 and we can simply replicate it right here Control c Control v and the only thing we will change is to set this to plus 300 and again make sure that it's connected as false not true because it's if it's true it won't do anything but if it's false it will work click on play and you can see it doesn't matter how much i move it it doesn't work and I can switch only between these three lines with this simple code. That's quite nice actually. Let's put here some comments so we know what that's what's up here. We'll move it up. Okay. Take all of it. Press C. Call it movement. And take and then take these two. Control C again. And put here limit movement. By the way, if this is already a bit too messy for you, you can click on your limit movement and change its color to, let's say, red. Or something like that. Then you will have quite a nice color palette right here. And let's do the same things with these, actually. Switch it to blue. Okay, this is the weirdest blue I have ever seen in my life, but doesn't matter. And we will change font size to 10. The next thing we should do is to add here camera because look at that our camera is moving again with us which doesn't look at all how it is in a regular endless runner and it was in it is also quite close etc etc so we will have to get rid of it and for that we will need to create new actor new blueprint actor call it camera underscore pp i should have done this before but i it's much better if you put uh, different shortcuts for different assets in your game. So corridor should be again corridor underscore pp like blueprint. Then click on your camera and let's create here camera. All right, compile it and go into event graph. We will need to create here event tick and let's add here local offset. Add actor local offset which is pretty much very similar to what we have in our third person character as add movement input but we don't have here function for character movement so we have to do something like this we will need to get forward vector so let's get forward vector and now we can just connect it here in delta location we need to multiply it with something so let's set it vector times float and this value we need to set as speed so we need to set it to same value as it was on third person character so let's put here variable and call it speed underscore cam. Then in third person character we have speed and let's rename it to 
underscore her like character and by default we have it okay all right compile by default we have it to 0 0.8 so let's see if we can set it on same value here all right but now let's put it in the game so take our camera put it on the same coordinates as our player which means y must be zero Put it up and make sure that you don't rotate it otherwise your vector wouldn't work your forward vector wouldn't work and it would go somewhere to hell so if you want to rotate it well you know what we will do with that later first of all let's make sure that we switch our camera view to this new camera so click on your third person character and right here we will need event begin play and first of all we need to call for the doctor so let's do act uh, let's do casting and in this case it will be get actor of class that actor of class is of course our camera camera pp and now what we will need to do is to get player character oh no get player controller i believe and we will set camera set view target with plan connect it to execution pin and then new target view right here let's click on play and see what it does and you can see that our camera switched but seems like our character is running way too fast well that means our camera is moving way too slow let's see where the problem is all right all right well it was pretty simple even though i'm not quite sure why isn't like this well in camera bp you cannot put it in our speed of cam on 0 0.8 you need to put it into 8 just move it to the left i'll just add 0 as you would and on player character leave it like that as 0 0.8 which is quite strange actually i'm not sure why it is like that but now if you click on play you can see that everything is just fine but now we need to adjust the size of that camera so let's move it a little bit closer down and as i said you cannot rotate it here if you want to rotate it you need to go open your camera pp and rotate it down right here now if you click on play it looks just nice now oh, that camera was, is way too close right now so let's move it on it's set to minus 20 right now on y-axis so let's do minus 12 that could be cool and maybe i would actually change perspective if you want to edit it in real time you can click on that camera which is this one and adjust it here see maybe something like 75 oh, that's way too close all right i will leave that to you you can play with it and make it just perfect but now you can see that i can move my character camera is not moving with it everything is cool but what i can actually do is to make it a bit nicer and adhere that camera blend for that i will actually click on our third person character and change this camera so it's much closer you need to click on camera boom and switch it to like 20 no all right that's way too much let's switch it to 50 if you look in the game it's okay that's way too close let's do 100 and make it look so it's looking at him from behind something like that a bit close a bit lower that's cool so we will start with this camera but then with our camera blend right here let's comment it see change camera looking look at blend time that's how long that blend towards this camera will take we will change it to two seconds which is actually pretty long maybe it should be lower so now when you click on play it will start in your original camera and slowly go to your new camera which looks quite cool actually and you could have seen that jump and drop on that so let's just lower it just make sure that it's pretty much on the same z coordinates as floor now it shouldn't be that aggressive yeah now it's pretty smooth make sure that you have this collision high enough so you can jump over it i would maybe put that camera a little bit more behind so you can see a whole body when he will be jumping something like that yeah look at that that's pretty cool you still can see full body but you got the idea 
All right, so now we have smooth transition of camera. We have sort of a game, but we don't have anything that can kill us. And there is never a good game there where nothing can kill you. So let's adhere some obstacles. We will need to create for the new blueprint, blueprint actor. That should be called obstacle. Again, I forgot obstacle BP, obstacle underscore BP. Let's open it and we will just add here cube. Cube sounds about cute, if you know what I mean. That was terrible, I'm sorry. Now let's go into corridor BP and we will add here and we will let it spawn somewhere here. So on event begin play, which means once this will be spawned, we will create actor from class. No, 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 not action, it's sense. It's actually, I believe, spawn, spawn actor from class. Oh yeah, and you shouldn't compile before you connect it because it will give you this error. And we need to choose where it should be. All right, so now we need to find reference for where to spawn it. Let's add here new arrow. It should be arrow underscore obstacle underscore zero one. Make sure that Y is set to zero and X should be, you know what, X actually doesn't matter. Let's set X to 200 and Y is to zero and Z move a little bit up. So it should be pretty much on the start of this mesh. Okay, compile. Now let's duplicate it. Obstacle two, set it Y to 300, then duplicate it again and set it to Y minus 300. So we have all three lines. And then I would probably move it a bit forward. Let's set X to 500, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a reference. So now you would go to event graph. We can actually do it even on construction script, but it doesn't really matter right now. So let's spawn obstacle. And from these, we will make array. Make array. Click here, add pin and add pin. Connect all three of them. From that array, we will get a copy. That copy will be a random integer because we always, every time it will spawn, we want it to pick a random one. So let's put here a random integer in the range. Two, which means it, that means it will choose one of these three. And from here, we want to click on the spawn transform, split structure pin, rotation and vector should be the same, that's all right. But from our arrow, we will get world location, split structure pin, and again, split structure pin on location once more. And we will take our Z connect it, and our Y and connect it. So it will take random Y and Z coordinates from here. But for X, we want it to be anywhere on this space. So let's put here a random integer, the random float in range. You know what? We will do it differently. I'm sorry, we just will need to change it a little bit. We will take our X from here, set it to plus, float plus float, connect it here. And right here we'll connect our random float in range. So it will take X location from here and add some value to it. And let's say that from it's it will start on the 500 to 1000, which means that you can add from 100 to 500 units, from 100 to 500 units, and then select it here. The difference is that right now it will use this location, from which means location of that arrow, and then add something to it. Oh, well, it seems that it's quite cool. You know what? Let's speed that guy up a little bit. Our camera will run away, but it doesn't matter. Now I just need to test it. So click on speed character and set it to 10. Oh, come on. Set it to 10 so it will run super fast. And you can see that it's not, well, now it's stopped. Wonderful. And our camera is trying to catch it, but it's all right. That's because we have now the synchronized speed. We are just testing if it's spawning random obstacles, which it seems it does. So let's change it quickly to 0 0.8 again. 
All right, this is a bit too easy, as you can see. So what we will do, is we will create another obstacle on this space. So let's go into, okay, we need to go back into corridor BP. And in viewport, it's spawning a few of them here. Let's take all of them, move it back, then duplicate it. And four to six, move right here, forward a bit. Then in constructions, uh, no, in event graph, we will take this and change the random float to something lower. So it doesn't cross this these two. And we will actually switch this to function. So right click and collapse it to function. That function should be, uh, where are you? There you go. Left on functions, spawn obstacles, move it all up. And now we just want to repeat it. And right here we want spawn from one to two. No, what is the problem? We got from one to three. Oh yes, one to three. We will need to take four to six. Connect it right here. And that should be fine. Look at that. Now we have more obstacles. The other problem is that our obstacles are spawning a bit too low. That's simply because if you take this cube, you could see that in the middle of it is this thing, which is center of it, coordinate 0, 0, 0, and we need to start on it. So let's start like that and do one more actually thing. We can change its scale on our construction script because right now every, it, every time it has the same coordinates, so you could just jump over it and it would be super easy to do. So let's say that I want to go into construction script, take that cube, and change scale. Set the world scale 3D, connect it, and by default, uh, wait, what? Which one is it? A Z should be change. Of course, it's Z. What am I thinking about? X should be one, Y should be one. Um, you need to split it before, and then for Z, we'll use a random float in range, and that will be from 0 0.8 to. To oh, 2.5, let's say. So now, if you click on play, you can see that they have always different scale on z axis. Some of them are small, so you can jump over them, but this one should be pretty hard to jump over. Okay, I still did that, but it slowed our camera, which is quite alright because next time, once you will touch it, it will actually kill you. So, for that, we will add here collision on component back in obstacle BP. Add here collision, make sure that it's under cube because we want it to change if we change scale of this cube. So what's up, what's up, why are you lagging so much? Hmm. Oh, of course, the problem is with construction script because it's trying to edit them in real time while, while I'm editing it, which makes it probably go kind of nuts. So let's switch it all to the lock lock scale and scale it up and make sure that it covers all of it. All right, put it in construction script, connect. Now it should be fine. See, works just fine. And right now, and the only thing we will do here is once this box collision will on component begin overlap with our character, let's cast to third person character, which is our player pawn. We will, we won't do anything, but we'll just prepare something for it. Let's add here a new custom event and call it that. And we'll cast it. All right, so before we will set up that, let's actually start to work on visual side of our game and add here new pawn, new character they have imported before. So we created folder character. Let's put it here. Where is my run? Oh, here, run was changed with uh, materials, that's pretty bad. Let's move it back in characters. And first of all, we need to click on that skeletal mesh and preview some animations just to make sure that everything is cool. Seems like it is. And that's just me being paranoid, to be honest, but you will, you will get used to it once you develop enough. <laughs> and we'll need to, first of all, create animation blueprint. So let's add here. Let's right click, put it animations and animation blueprint. Our skeleton will be run skeleton. You should rename it to name of your character and 
Andres Crow Skeleton, but we won't mess with that right now. This should be just character underscore anim pp. Open it. Right click and create new state machine. Connect it right here. And first will be new state. That should be run slash. Let's put it just on a run. You know what? We will start with a run. Connect here our run animation in state machine just connect it right here and let's also set up here a jump so click here on event blueprint update animation here on left and we will need to of course cast to third person character because that's the one we will be using with it connect it from casting let's take is falling from character movement and this will give us boolean that we can promote to variable and that variable should be is jumping or just is falling doesn't really matter connect it here and now back in new state machine I right click new one new state call it jump if you open it put here our jump animation and let's add here arrows first one should connect to is jumping and now we will need to do it a bit differently let's see equal equal boolean if it's true do jumping if it's not true on our arrow back it's not jumping and then let's go to third person bp third person character and we'll need to change it so click on that skeletal mesh and switch it to run and as animal to need to be use animation blueprint and our animation blueprint should be of course newly created character animation bp and you can see that he's already running if i jump he is actually jumping with me look at that that looks kind of weird not gonna lie but i can see that those animations don't look as nice as i would like to so you can actually probably do something about that if you click back on character character anim bp then in here in these transitions you can make longer this time of interpolation right here in duration let's switch it into jumping to something actually shorter 0 0.5 and on your time on your way back let's try 0 0.5 so 0, point, no, 0 fine and 0 0.5 let's see okay that that looks that looks still kind of weird so probably it used different animations than i'm using but that's what you gotta use with it you can see that the animation ended before he f managed to fall down so you would have to change the animation or make it longer you can probably make uh, animation play longer if you click on this jump play animation play rate say it to a little bit slower 0 0.7 let's say it would look like it will be in slow motion but it looks much better than it did before and that's what counts so now we have our new character so let's make sure that he can die yes and let's also move a bit closer this camera so it's more realistic yeah something like that that's cool he's jumping way too high if you want to limit the way he jumps open third person character and in character movement let's here max step height no 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 character movement jumping falling jump z velocity right here it's on 600 what's default by the way 450 420 let's set it to 300 he won't jump too much but it will do the trick see it will be something just really super low it will work well, maybe a little bit more as i said you need to find your perfect values for your game design it's always a bit different yeah that's that will work for me even though he probably now won't be able to jump over anything oh he did that one so now let's make sure that he can die for that we will need our obstacles viewport and after our box i believe that we have already done that right yep we have casting and calling out that first of all we will need to stop our camera so let's go into camera bp open it 
right here and right now it's going on event tick so we'll put here branch promote it to variables that variable should be is moving and by default it's set to true so compile make sure it is true and if it's true it will move but if we stop after that we will get actor of class and find our camera camera underscore bp and we'll take that variable which means set is moving and set it to false so our camera will stop you need to set is moving to false, obviously, you just, just sometimes, it doesn't work here sometimes, you know, don't ask me why. And now you can see, it is still pretending to run, but camera stopped, that's cool. Because now we will actually even kill him. So back in the person character, after our death, which if you don't remember is called from this obstacle, after it will overlap with our player, it will cast to it and call death. We will actually stop movement. Now we will disable movement and do something pretty funny with it. Let's set collisions enabled on our mesh. That collision preset sets to collisions enabled, query and physics. Now take that mesh and set all bodies below physics blend weight. Set all bodies simulate physics now not a reset just set simulate physics set it to new simulate and connect and then again from mesh set all bodies physics blend weight yep, that should be it and set physics blend weight to one connect it and let me show you what it does once you actually run into it to do boom yeah he's completely like dead it killed him <laughs> look at how look at his legs he's not even human anymore let's see if we can make it a bit more realistic click on character physics is set here you can see it it's pretty much same thing let's try to make him a bit more realistic select all of it regenerate it and maybe this probably is not a good idea for mobile game but if you want to have it realistic you can set it to single convex, convex hull and re-simulate it but again and this will get you probably the most realistic way how to, to deal with human body why am i what am i teaching you thank god but pro honestly don't do this for mobile game it can be quite expensive i will i will stop it just just to be sure Switch it in pack in capsules and regenerate. Alright, but one more thing we can do in third person character. Edit and we don't need to go all the way. Let's set it to 0 0.75 so it won't completely simulate everything. And see. Okay, that, that looks much more realistic. Alright, that looks pretty still bad. And that animation is still playing, which is not really good. We can stop it we can we can add here new animation of that so no you know what leave it to zero, leave it to one i'm not gonna deal with it right now you can add here different animations and play with it you can add here animations of that so he won't he will stop moving overall and etc 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 you can also add here a new camera and again switch to that camera in the same way that i showed you with this camera and makes some camera circling around him or something like that. It can look quite cool, especially on game, on mobile game. All right, so now let's make sure that your game looks nice. And for that, we will use mega scans. Because if you are Unreal Engine user, you have access for free to a library of more than almost 400,000, oh, 14,000, sorry, 14,000 assets that you can use at your disposal, which are textures, materials, models, etc. etc. Uh, you just need to download it and log in with your Epic account. I will leave you a link in the description. All right, for that we will use this app, which is which is from Quixel called Brit, which you can also see its plugin here, right in Engine Megascans, and it will help us put the game, put these assets right in the game. Let's look at this unfinished building collection, and let's say that I want to some of these to put in my game. So, for example, these pillars looks look quite cool. So I just want to 
look at downloads i think i wouldn't use text resolution 2k all right it has to be 2k then i will show you later how to make it smaller in engine and let's download some lots four that's 700 triangles for each that should be all right for mobile game generally if you are making game for low-end system like mobile games or vr it's better to have as little triangles as possible with still having it look nice and as material preset let's set until form and download it right it will download in the background so let's find a few more stuff for example these materials looks look quite cool smooth concrete wall that we can come handy can set it unreal blah 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 everything is cool and it's material so you don't need to change any triangles because it doesn't have any download it and let's also find some some obstacles that we will have to jump over and these bulk bags look just like something i would look for but this time i'm definitely gonna use lot 5 because 3000 triangles for each would be kind of overkill that would be like a really big all right again unreal and let's maybe find a few more assets let's see what we can do with these stairs maybe we'll be able to put them in game and make our player run on it 1000 lot that's 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 quite a lot of triangles so be careful when you are using something from here high-end mobiles will do it will do it without a problem but if you want to make a game that is playable on every single phone with Android like 7, 6, you will have probably need to think about this. And let's add here some more rocks. For example, oh, you know, bricks Bricks are better than rocks. Let's take only lot 7 and download it again. Right, you can see most of them have been already downloaded. So what I can do now is to put them in the engine. So let's click on that concrete pillar and on this little arrow. Export it to Unreal probably won't work because I will need to change my... Oh, it has been exported successfully. Let's look at that. And look at that. It's already... All right. I'm surprised. I actually expected we wouldn't have to change our way, but it's already here. Well, that, that's actually cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised a bit. Seems like they have been... They improved. I, I don't even have updated the lightest version, but if you had a problem with that for export setting, you needed to change X project location, which I didn't have to do right now. It found it automatically with, uh, my, uh, with my open version of Unreal, but if you had problem with that, look here. But that's pretty cool. It did by itself. So let's export all of these. I probably will have to go one on one, so uh, I will probably have to go one by one, so I will import it all in the engine and see you then. Alright, so we created a few new folders here, we will go here in Megascans and start with surfaces, because I have two. One is for wall and one is for floor. So, first of all, let's open our corridor and put here our material, put it on site and let's put here our old concrete. Oh, come on old concrete material see how it looks not bad not too bad All right but as i said these are 2k textures which mobiles can handle but you can't have too many of them so if you just open it you can right click somewhere here in da -da -da. textures i believe so if you want to limit that you will have to click on each of these textures for example this one uh, click on this compression will probably have this closed so click on this arrow and you here you have maximum texture size and right now it's set to zero that means it doesn't have maximum size let's say that you want to have just 224 uh, so now the game when it will be displayed it will have only 124 pixels per 124 pixels but you would have to do it for each of these maps so I'm not going to bother with that. If you have problems with performance, probably deal with that first. Textures are generally what causes most problems, unless you have like thousand things on geek, etc, etc. Generally, art assets are the most expensive for mobile games. All right, now let's take this corridor and I would add here some stuff to make it look like actual corridor. All right, so I have created here sort of a corridor. Looks pretty cheap, but it will work. So now 
we will need to do something with these obstacles because they don't look quite nice. So let's go into third person blueprints, obstacle BP. And we will have to, first of all, let's disable this construction script and change this cube to different static mesh. And we have here a few new stuff, for example, this, ah, they have such a weird names that I can't, can't really see what they are actually. Right, let's switch it back and move it. Come on. You will have to move that collision, of course, move it down, something like that. So now if you click on play, you will always have here something like that, but will you? you won't be able to jump over it. So we'll probably actually have to increase the amount of jump because even though character is above it, the important thing is this capsule. That's why I showed you, I let you to set it and not hidden in game so you can actually see where the problem is. So let's actually change that jumping to something much higher, jump Z velocity to 600 again. All right, I didn't have to change it before, I got it. Now let's also add here some of these pillars. So uh, right here we'll add another arrows. So arrow underscore pillar. You know what now, let's not call it pillar, let's call it arrow rubbish. And again, create a few of them. So first of all, move this one. Again, duplicate, let's put it, let's say here. Oh, did I? Yeah, I did duplicate it. Why don't I see it here? Yeah, they are a bit too low. You need to set Z to 10 again. All right. You don't have to use that many arrows. There are different ways how to solve this, but I, I, I personally prefer to use arrows. All right, compile. And now in construction script this time, let's add mesh. Add static mesh component and compile it. Its relative transform should be some of these. So again, we will have, we will make an array from it. All right, get a copy. And as you would guess, random integer in range zero to two. From that get relative transform. You probably don't need to change anything here. And let's set it to error. So let's set it to that pillar. So, oh, I know it's not called pillar. I wish it would be called pillar. So in Megascans, Megascan, ah, where are you? All right, I'm recording for too long, not gonna lie. 3D assets, um, da -da -da, concrete pillar, I believe. Yeah, here we go. And it's called like this, why the hell not? Ujik. Here you go. And you can see that it's switching them between these two. So if you play, it will be always somewhere. And the good thing is that you can't run into it. Let's make it bigger. And because we are using corridors from these arrows, we just need to scale arrows. So right click scale this up and maybe even more on z-axis something like that and now it should be fine all right let's actually add that floor on top of it as well so duplicate it and put it up there ah oh, we need to change uh, we need to change that pillar with all of these arrows, sorry. Make sure that that scale is same, so copy it here and arrow to rubbish, just paste. All right, so now that scale is same in all of these. And now if you play, it will be probably a bit dark, but you can add here lights or something like that. Now you can see that I, he didn't make it, he died, he's somewhere there. You can look at him. You probably would really need to add here some camera that will follow him, which should be really simple. So I will leave that in your capable hands. All right, and let's make it a bit more visually pleasing and add here some of these bricks. Now when we have imported them, 
in that corridor we will add static mesh just static mesh call it brick yeah, compile and put one here then duplicate it brick 2 put it here then again duplicate it and put one somewhere here so it will be close to that pillar and now make sure that you save your game because what i will do now tend to crash the engine it's not that it's hard it just tend to crash the engine it's a weird bug I, I feel like i'm saying it in every tutorial <laughs> all right open corridor again and in our construction script we will take these bricks and set them you know what let's let's actually let's simplify it again make array just because it's easier for after that we will do for loop for each loop so it will execute it for each of these bricks connect it here and for each of these elements we want to set mesh for our static mesh compile and that mesh let's promote to variable call it brick list compile save everything again i'm paranoid but i have a reason to be again in corridor now you can deselect it and here if you click on your brick list click here right up and switch it to array compile and engine didn't crash that's good so right now in this default value we will add here different bricks so again let's put it on the side and with 3d assets you can see that we have here few different bricks we have there is uh, five of them so let's oh wait let's, one one two three four five six okay there are six of them my bad i i don't know why i counted zero for some reason that's probably professional deformation it's coming to you too all right so let's add here six different and connect them all here and so now we have that list saved here in brick list so from that we will get a copy and we want a random integer nope a random integer in range and range is from 0 to 5 so you have six different variants of what could happen now if you click on play you should have here different bricks and they are not here why is that all right it wasn't spawning but it actually was spawning but bricks are a bit too low so you will need to select all of these bricks and just move them up so they are actually here on the all right now they are in the air so now they should be on the floor about that let's scale them up you know this will be quite unrealistic but whatever this is a game it don't need to be realistic and you can see that it always changed them and you should probably do better if you also change its location so i won't probably do that now because you can you already know how to do it so you, you can change its location in the same way as with this pillar and if you do and or you or you can here in construction script add the location to it or do something with that now if you play it you can see that you got these bricks here and you can jump over it blah 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 you can also see that uh, from here i can see where that corridor is ending you can simply either make that corridor longer or from the start you can spawn two of them and then always spawn the third one all right and as quick bonus let's also sometimes add here these stairs first of all if you look at it it has yellow collision premises zero that means it doesn't have any collisions but we can quickly fix that if you open it and look at simple collisions it doesn't have any so you can simply right click on da -da -da, add 18 simplified collisions and it created something all right that looks terrible <laughs> you can also put here this auto convex collisions tool which i have already here and if you apply it it will create much more realistic ones so now if you put it in the game right now it will just stop you it just a test that it has a collisions you can see that he stepped up a little bit so it does have collisions 
And what we can do here is to go in blueprints and right now we are spawning cor uh, corridor BP and I want to actually duplicate it and create here corridor with stairs BP still BP and this time I don't want to have this any pillars so let's where am I setting pillars all rubbish I believe is pillars and I also don't want to have here any bricks to be honest I don't want to have here any of these so I can delete all these arrows oh no you, you cannot delete obstacle and spawn of course you need to delete only arrow rubbish and arrow brick and possibly don't delete floor like I just did what I want to do is to add here static mesh call it stairs 01 because I want to have two of them and let's set it to the stairs uh, where are you so concrete stairs right here and you can see that you have to rotate it about 90 degrees on oh no what am I doing of course it's 90 degrees on the axis and let's say that you move it here then duplicate it again rotate it on uh, z axis about minus 90 should work and ta -da -da, let's move it a little bit more forward and in between we can add just some box so duplicate it you can call it stairs free it doesn't really matter let's put here this cube we just need some collisions that will stand in between that so you don't fall when you run over it and as material let's say uh, that oh, right, not that one concrete pillar concrete pillar for example does does look pretty bad but you know what this is just to show you how it can look so I will let you play with that and then I will add here scene component and make sure that stairs one to three will be okay first of all you need to detach scene component and then take stair one to three and connect it under that so now if you move scene component all of them will move as well and we will use that to switch these sides so in construction script we will take the scene component set its world location and before that we will take its world location so get world location split structure pin again split structure pin and now it's just randomly throwing them anywhere as you would expect well not then <laughs> randomly throwing them it's on zero 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 what am i talking about anymore and z should be the same let's set y to same thing i don't want really to it to move and x should be oh, where are you the same thing we used before so we will take its location set it to plus and plus something in range so float in range from pretty much from zero to let's go with 300 and connect it into x all right that's not moving too much let's go to 800 all right so now when we have it here we can simply need to make sure that once it will be spawning next one in these corridors uh what is it i went begin prep so once our character overlaps this one it will spawn corridor pp so we will do completely same trick here promote this to variable compile save everything promote to array okay close it delete uh, disconnect here prefer to be sure then click on that variable connect convert it to array i didn't have even one crash today that's that's weird that's that's kind of strange <laughs> you can call it corridor list and here we have we will have only two so one should be our corridor pp and the other one should be corridor with come on corridor with stairs 
So every time you will have corridor with star, it will only spawn corridor BP. But if you have corridor BP, it can spawn either corridor BP or corridor with stairs. So let's take our corridor list, get corridor list, get a copy and a random integer in range 0 to 1 because we have only two of them. If you want to add more variety to it, you can create as many corridors as you want and do something like that. So let's try to connect it, class here and see if it all works. And you can see that right there is corridor with stairs. So let's see if our player will run to it and he runs on it. Congratulations guys. That's that's already much better than most games on the market. Like let's be real Come on, guys. We already did it. We already made it gamers. Why did I say gamers? I'm too much of a YouTuber now. <laughs> so now let's create menu and start and end of the game. So we will have to create new widget. So right click, user interface, widget blueprint and call it menu. Open it and we will just add here a few buttons. Scale it up, put text in it, that should be start here in text block and after you will click on it, on, uh, on clicked, we will do something but before that we will change it in our third person character. So first of all we have our event begin play and on that we will actually pause game. Well before that we will create widget which is the one we have just added, menu add it to viewport, add to viewport, connect it right here and then let's pause our game so nothing actually happens. Set game paused and set it to true. Alright and once you have it let's go into menu and after we click on that button set game paused and we won't set it to true it will be untrue again and you can play. So you click on play can see everything is standing we got our start if I click on it everything starts to work but our start is still here and stuff and you can also see that our camera is way closer for some reason so we'll probably have to move that camera back then something like this should be fine let's get back to menu and add here another one right click on it duplicate it Change it to end, compile, and after someone clicks on it, on clicked, let's set it to quit game. So if you click on it, and game will end. And we also need, you can already see that it's flying everywhere on the screen. You need to change anchor points if that happens. Put it on center, right here on center as well. Now it looks nice. And let's actually put here some image. You can put here image of your game or anything. Make sure that it's under it. So the order set to zero and the order of buttons set to let's go with one and the order with button also to one. All right, make sure that it covers everything. I don't have here any pictures I could put there. So let's just kind of change. Let's just change its color to something like that. It's not centered again, anchor point center. Click on play, start and you can see that it doesn't disappear. We will need to deal with that. Right, so after you click on your button, let's uh, delete our widgets, remove all widgets, compile, it should work. Start and look at that. You, guys, you have to say that this looks quite wonderful. This deserves the like. like. Alright, so now let's do some optimization to make sure it will work on your phone. First thing you should do is to check these textures and possibly downscale them. Set maximum texture size right here. So you should probably go into project setting and one of the quickest thing is to change it to forward shading. Enable it right here. I wouldn't do it because it will have to reshader. It will have to reload all the shaders, which I definitely don't want to do right now. So you can click it here. Other thing that can really help is blueprint navitization. So if you put here blueprint navitization, this method, and change it to inclusive, that should speed up your game a bit because it will take all your blueprint and convert them to C, which is much faster. 
you can simply take a command which you also need to set up a shortcut for in your project or I believe engine setting and for me it's uh, F11 but I have no idea how it what is it by default and put here stat GPU and look at that once you will start your game and it will tell you where is past a bit of problem you can see that there is some post processing that can be happening but it has only 0.2 you should have everything here under 16 if you want it to run on mobiles well 16 is pretty much 60 frames per second so you can probably go with a little bit lower but try to stay in that range the other thing you can do is to also right now if you don't want to launch it right now on phone because you can connect your phone through usb cable and launch it and test it all on it which is probably the best way to how to do it you can also test it right here if you click on editor preferences there should be play and right here you can set it to you can switch this which will switch it to a landscape or portrait orientation and this will be probably work on our portrait so now if you have to enable it you have to click on this new editor window it probably won't show you this mouse but click new new editor window you can see that images looks quite different than on the widescreen logically this doesn't really mean that that's how it will look on your phone so it's definitely better to have your phone connected and always play test on that you can see if i click here i can test it like this it looks bit more like it will <laughs> okay that was funny <laughs> like it will in the regular phone but still have it connected like really guys you have phone don't tell me that you don't you are probably watching on the phone come on comment if you are watching on the phone the another the another thing is that you should probably get rid of light source this regular one because it's directional light which isn't really good you are probably much better off if you put just some simple movable light it's weird but movable light is still usually less expensive than this light source and put it in front of the player let's test it put here light spotlight and from above the player something like that yeah if, if, you, if you are going for a horror this could look pretty cool let's look at that delete source i know i know what it does and now if you play you can see that it looks much more horror like with light you can generally change a lot of stuff and that's about it i'm glad that you followed it until here because let's be real this was super long tutorial but i believe that it was worth it i believe that in this tutorial i have showed you so much stuff that you can just start putting your games out there and that will be pretty good at least i believe you now it's all on your design if it was helpful for you i would really appreciate if you press the like button subscribe and all this stuff and you can join the discord there is quite a good community there and we are all sharing ideas help each other etc etc I'm moving it, sorry. Uh, that's about it. Sir Fancy out. Good luck. You will need it.